Today's readings. Fries and forever. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands, as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Colossians 3 verses 18 to 19. Arnold and I stopped by the office mailroom to get some documents. Your documents are no longer here, the guy at the window said. I panicked and retaliated how I was specifically told to get them there. The guy checked again and gave the same answer. Arnold interrupted my heated rebuttal and said we should leave. I had just lost a debate and all because my husband-to-be took the other side and not mine. For the rest of the day, I ignored Arnold even if he tried to chat. He suggested we drive by McDonald's for fries. My weakness failed me. Then he explained his side and I realized my anger over a piece of paper wasn't worth it. It could have been a great day but I allowed my emotions to take control. I neglected my future husband's efforts to cheer me up. So, I finally let go. I didn't want our future married life to be like this. Friends, anger is a valid feeling, but does every bit of it make life better? You may miss life's moments if you keep sulking. Life is short. Choose joy. Reflect. In arguments, ask, will this matter in five years? If not, let it slide and focus on joy. Wives, be thankful for your patient husbands. Husbands, always be loving. As we reflect on these words from the Bible, we can see how they apply to our daily lives, especially in our relationships. In arguments, it's easy to get caught up in the heat of the moment and let small issues escalate into bigger ones. But as St. Paul advises us, we should ask ourselves if this argument will matter in five years' time. If not, then it's probably not worth getting too worked up over. Instead, we should let it slide and focus on the bigger picture of joy and love in our relationships. For wives, this advice can be particularly challenging. It's natural to want our husbands to understand and respond to our needs, but sometimes they may not be as patient as we'd like them to be. In these moments, we can choose to be thankful for their love and commitment, rather than focusing on their shortcomings. By practicing gratitude and appreciation, we can cultivate a deeper sense of joy and fulfillment in our marriages. Similarly, husbands can also benefit from this advice. By always being loving and patient with our wives, we can create a strong foundation of trust and respect in our relationships. This doesn't mean that we should ignore our own needs or feelings, but rather that we should strive to put the needs of our spouses first whenever possible. By doing so, we can foster a deeper sense of joy and intimacy in our marriages. In summary, these words from the Bible encourage us to focus on joy and love in our relationships, even in the face of disagreements or challenges. By practicing gratitude, patience, and forgiveness, we can cultivate a deeper sense of fulfillment and happiness in our marriages and other relationships as well. Let us strive to put these words into practice in our daily lives, trusting that they will lead us towards greater joy and love. Jesus, make me a loving partner and a supportive parent. Amen. Saint Stephen, first martyr, pray for us. First reading 1 Samuel 1 verses 20 to 22, 24 to 28, or Sirah 3 verses 2 to 6, 12 to 14. Hannah's gratitude, as well as her willingness to offer her greatest gift, her son, back to God, is something we must develop in our relationship with him. Everything good is from God, and before calling it our own, we must first recognize that it is his. This is the first step in overcoming the sin of covetousness related to people or things. In those days Hannah conceived, and at the end of her term bore a son whom she called Samuel, since she had asked the Lord for him. The next time her husband Elkanah was going up with the rest of his household to offer the customary sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vows, Hannah did not go, explaining to her husband, Once the child is weaned, I will take him to appear before the Lord and to remain there forever, I will offer him as a perpetual Nazirite. Once Samuel was weaned, Hannah brought him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine and presented him at the temple of the Lord in Shiloh. 
After the boy's father had sacrificed the young bull, Hannah, his mother, approached Eli and said, Pardon, my lord. As you live, my lord, I am the woman who stood near you here, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted my request. Now I, in turn, give him to the Lord, as long as he lives, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. Hannah left Samuel there. Responsorial Psalm Psalm 84 verses 2 to 3, 5 to 6, 9 to 10, or Psalm 128 verses 1 to 2, 3, 4 to 5. Response, Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Response, Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. Happy they who dwell in your house. Continually they praise you. Happy the men whose strength you are. Their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage. Response, Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. O Lord of hosts, hear our prayer, hearken, O God of Jacob. O God, behold our shield, and look upon the face of your anointed. Response, Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. Second reading 1 John 3 verses 1 to 2, 21 to 24, or Colossians 3 verses 12 to 21. A family's relationships are critical to its strength and growth. The structures of our world do not support family life well. The focus is on the individual over the other. This is the opposite of a family mentality where the focus is on what I can offer others, and not on what others can give to me. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. And so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, what we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from Him whatever we ask because we keep His commandments and do what pleases Him. And His commandment is this, we should believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as He commanded us. Those who keep His commandments remain in Him, and He in them, and the way we know that He remains in us is from the Spirit that He gave us. Gospel Luke 2 verses 41 to 52 Jesus knows the importance of living in a family, as well as obedience to His earthly parents. He knows the importance of obeying God, the Father. Let us learn from Jesus' example and live in a similar fashion. We may not be kids anymore, but we will always be children of our Heavenly Father. Gospel Acclamation Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Each year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover, and when he was twelve years old, they went up according to festival custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances, but not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions and all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them, and his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. Reflect. Christ chose to be born and grow up in the bosom of the Holy Family of Joseph and Mary. Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 1655. Welcome back to our YouTube series, where we explore the beauty and depth of the Catholic faith through reflections on the Bible. Today. We're going to dive into a powerful statement from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, Christ chose to be born and grow up in the bosom of the Holy Family of Joseph and Mary. 
This statement is a reminder that Jesus, our Savior, chose to be born into a human family. He didn't come to earth as an adult, already fully formed in his divine nature. Instead, he came as a vulnerable baby, completely dependent on his parents for his survival. This vulnerability is a powerful image for us as Christians. It reminds us that Jesus understands what it means to be human, to be weak and needy. He knows what it's like to be completely dependent on others for our needs. But it's not just Jesus' vulnerability that we can learn from. It's also the example of his earthly parents, Joseph and Mary. They raised Jesus with love and discipline, teaching him about God and helping him grow in wisdom and stature. They showed us what it means to be faithful parents, putting their children's needs before their own. And this isn't just a lesson for biological parents. All of us have families, whether they're biological or chosen. We can learn from Joseph and Mary's example of loving and nurturing those around us, just as Jesus did. We can strive to create a holy family in our own homes, filled with love, respect, and faith. Ultimately, Jesus' choice to be born into a human family reminds us that God is intimately involved in our lives. He didn't just drop us onto this earth and leave us to fend for ourselves. Instead, He chose to enter into our human experience, becoming one of us so that He could save us. Let us strive to honor this gift by living out our own faith in our families and communities, just as Joseph and Mary did. Thank you for joining us today on this reflection. May God bless you abundantly. My God, my Father. Christmas is the season of gift giving. As I write this reflection, I am thinking of you. I know that you have received something special yesterday. But going beyond material gifts, Christmas is the time when we recognize the greatest gift we receive from God, Jesus Christ. He is God's gift because through His becoming like us, we became sharers of His divine life. But that's not all. Along with the salvation that Jesus granted us, He made us children of His own Father. We become members of the Heavenly Family. In today's celebration, the Feast of the Holy Family, the Gospel inspires us to reflect on the life of the Holy Family of Nazareth. As a human family, they lived in love, understanding, peace, concern for one another, and holiness. They fulfilled the prescriptions of the law as a family. And, having a healthy environment, Jesus, through the examples of his parents, was obedient to them, and, advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. But the most striking part of today's gospel is when Jesus said, Did you not know that I must be in my Father's house? This statement can be linked to Luke 11 verse 2, when you pray, say, Father, if we sum up the sense of these two passages, we can clearly see that Jesus gifted us by sharing with us His Sonship. We are given the privilege to acknowledge His Father as our Father. From our own human families, we become members of the family of God. The Holy Family is our model. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph will teach us how to become true children of God. Reflect. Do you lead your family toward holiness? How do you live daily your being a member of the family of God? Welcome back to our YouTube channel, where we share short reflections on the Catholic faith. Today, we're going to talk about an important aspect of our Christian life, especially for those who are married or have families. The question is, do you lead your family toward holiness? We all know that raising a family is not an easy task. It requires a lot of time, effort, and love. But as Catholics, we're called to do more than just provide for our family's physical needs. We're also called to lead them towards holiness. This means helping our family members grow in their faith and live out the virtues of the gospel. It means being a role model for them, showing them how to pray, how to forgive, how to love. It means creating a home environment that is conducive to spiritual growth. This doesn't mean that we have to be perfect or that we'll never make mistakes. But it does mean that we strive to live out our faith in our daily lives and encourage our family members to do the same. It means being patient, kind, and understanding with one another, especially during difficult times. 
One way we can lead our families towards holiness is by making sure we attend Mass regularly as a family. This not only strengthens our own faith but also helps our children develop a love for the Eucharist and the sacraments. It also provides an opportunity for us to pray together as a family and reflect on the Gospel message. Another way we can lead our families towards holiness is by serving others in our community. This can be through volunteering at church or participating in local service projects. By showing our children the importance of serving others, we help them develop a heart for charity and compassion. Ultimately, leading our families towards holiness means living out our faith in all aspects of our lives. It means being committed to prayer, attending Mass regularly, serving others, and living out the virtues of the Gospel in our daily interactions with one another. By doing so, we help create a home environment that is conducive to spiritual growth and leads our families closer to Christ. Thank you for joining us today on this reflection about leading our families towards holiness. We hope you found it helpful and inspiring. Remember, as members of the family of God, we're called to live out our faith in all aspects of our lives and help others do the same. May God bless you and your families. Dearest Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, may your example be our constant inspiration to make our family life a source of joy, love, and peace. Amen. Today, I pray for. Thank you for watching. God bless.